How do you say that? How do you say that? How do you say that? How, How do, do you, you say, say that? that? Hello, and we have reached episode four of How Do You Say That? My co-host is Mark Rice, who does a really good impression of a dolphin. <laughs> I, I do, I do. Hello. Would you like to hear that said impression of dolphin? Obviously. <laughs> not bad, not bad. That is Tanya. We will meet her in just a moment's time. And my co-host is Samantha Boffin, who doesn't know with certainty the colour of her own eyes. Why is that, Sam? True. I have absolutely no idea. But I actually had to ask my family the other day and I said, well, exactly what colour are my eyes? And actually they couldn't all agree on it either. Wow. So there you go. I have no idea what they're... We were discussing before the show whether you're a changeling. Or a replicant. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more likely. So anyway, this week, our special guest needs no introduction because you've already heard her, but we're going to give her one anyway. <laughs> Welcome to the wonderful Tanya Rich. Well, good hello, evening. Hello, Tanya. Hello, Hi. hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tanya, as you probably know, is a voice actor who's been wowing us all for over 30 years now. Uh, not that she looks it. Um, she's lent her voice to countless projects for clients literally all over the world. And she has also been a voice coach for over 20 years and runs Richcraft Voice Coaching. Now, Richcraft train voice artists all over the world and they can be heard all over the globe on any kind of media platform. And she is very desirous to make people the best voiceovers they can possibly be. She's borderline fanatical about it. <laughs> and I should know because she bloody well trained me. Fanatical, eh? All <laughs> oh, right, OK. <laughs> so, Tanya, do you have a fun fact about yourself for us uh well i probably many but the one i'll share is um <laughs> i have purple hair for those of you who didn't know but actually i'm not that keen on the color purple oh. and in fact one of the things that i hate most in the world is beetroot uh and if i actually see yeah. it next to anything white like say a feta cheese and it's bleeding yeah. over the cheese ec even saying this it makes me feel peculiar and um i i actually shudder like a dog shivering in fact it, it makes me, it makes my fanny hurt in a horrible <laughs> way it makes me well, all weird inside. That's that's put a different slant on this episode. Yes, but you can, you know, bleep out the word funny if you want. I'm not sure I will. <laughs> well, on that note, I think we should crack on. Oh, with our, no. With our, with our, sorry, with our first script of the show and ask, how do how you say that? How do you that? say that? How do you say that? So... This is something that I have been... Well, it's not really something I've been working on this week. It's been something I, I've been working on recently. And it is an e-learning script, but it is a character within an e-learning script, which I don't know about anyone else, but I get more and more of these. Yeah, they're becoming more and more popular. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, it's much more fun for the voice actor. Yes. It's nice if there's a bit of narrator and a bit of character. Correct. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I do it a lot and I love it. As usual, all of these scripts will be in the show notes. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see in this one um, that and I've left it in because it's important to the voice actor that there's a bit of... Um, Obviously, we'd see this on screen. So there's a there's a bit of um, a scene setting in the middle that we don't read out, but it is worth us knowing. Hang on, direction in a script. This is taking a direction turn. Direction <laughs> in a script. Wow. I mean, for instance, in this one, the doctor wraps a blood pressure meter around somebody's arm. Now that's a a, a really important bit of uh, you know information for us as VOs, I True. think, because um, it it means that we well we need to pause there and we need to pause in a particular away. But you know there's movement there as well, isn't there? So exactly. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. But there's not that much moving because he's not pumping it with something on the ground, is he? It's <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> really unlikely, I think. <laughs> yeah. Also, could he not talk or she talk as she's rapping? So yes, to speak. absolutely, absolutely. Okay. But you, you, it's definitely um, a, a kind of a, it's definitely something that we need to know. Though yes, I think, yes, and of course, I you agree. can interpret it exactly how you like. That's I mean, that's that that's the beauty of it. I would think. Mm. But um, so we're going to do this sort of reading order. Obviously, um, Mark, I think yes. you could go first. Oh, I'm going to go the first. Doctor I'm... first off. Yes, yes. Maria, if you're feeling okay, let's measure your blood pressure. Could you um, come and sit here? Right. So. Uh, when was the last time you got your blood pressure checked? Hmm. Yeah, it, it's 140 over 90 now. It's higher than normal. I also want to check your HbA1c level. This 
I also want to check your HbA1c level. This should give us a better idea about your glucose. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Maria. It's a blood test. I know you're not keen on needles. Do you allow edits then? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do. Yeah, we definitely allow edits. Well, no, this is just... a fascinating procedure for me. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, yeah, because I suppose it's useful to know that, well, everybody stumbles at some point. But, um, but it, yeah, it was interesting because you, yeah, that uh, HbA1c needs it's to difficult. really trip off the tongue, doesn't yeah. it? Mm. Because they're a doctor. So, um, yeah, you see, you've got to get that bit right, I suppose. I probably yeah. would have rehearsed that more. <laughs> yes. I, one of the first jobs I ever did for corporates many, many years ago, I had to say millions of cells and it was the clients were there and I apparently sounded incredibly impressed. And they went on the talk back. Were you impressed with that, Tanya? I went, yes, I was. Yes, they know there's millions of cells. Don't be so impressed. <laughs> and that taught me a big lesson. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I also changed the blood pressure number. I said 140 you rather did. than 142. Yes, um, yes. And so that, that was bad of me. So I probably would have gone for another take of that. Did you visualise? I did visualise. And then I thought as as the uh, BP meter was wrapped around Maria's arm, it's mm. like, when was the last time you got your blood pressure checked? It's like it's another minute before we know it's 142 <laughs> over 90. And I go, well, I've got to cut that yes. down. I realise yeah, that. Yeah, no, yes, that was absolutely. a good call, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you put lots of nice little emotes in, which I liked, all your little emotes. I we think you've kind of effects. got to with characters, haven't <laughs> yeah. you? Yes, I almost yeah. did the effects. It's <laughs> 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 could have done your dolphin. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine what someone would think if a dolphin suddenly turned up while their blood pressure was being taken? <laughs> it could be Maria, of course, herself, because she's so worried about the blood pressure. <laughs> so, yes, lovely. So... Tanya, what would you, how would you do this one? Oh, okay. Mm, let's have a think. Okay. Maria, if you're feeling okay, let's measure your blood pressure. Could you come and sit here? When was the last time you got your blood pressure checked? Mm, it's 142 over 90 now. It's higher than normal. I also want to check your HbA1c level. This should give us a better idea about your glucose. I'm sorry, Maria. It's a blood test. I know you're not keen on needles. Nice, nice, <laughs> That's nice. A doctor bit of that wasn't at all sympathetic. I thought she wasn't at all sympathetic <laughs> well, there. It's like so I thought, I oh, this is you're not keen on needles, but I'm going to no, do it anyway. Hey, no, I was. I was doing a sympathetic face, <laughs> yes. but I'm a doctor at the end of the day, and yeah, God damn it, true, I need yeah. her blood. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. No, I love that. It's it, it's really interesting. It it and it takes it down from. Uh, having a, a really lovely chat just before you do the script and you went straight into character. I was really impressed by that. Oh, thank mm. you. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll do what I did. Okay, so. Ah, oh, Maria, now if you're feeling okay, let's measure your blood pressure. Could you come and sit here? Hmm. Now, when was the last time you got your blood pressure checked? It's 142 over 90 now. It's higher than normal. I also want to check your HbA1c level. This should give us a better idea about your glucose. <laughs> I'm sorry, Maria. It's a blood test. I know you're not keen on needles. Oh, I think you were the most sympathetic of the yeah, three. Yeah, you were. To be fair. Very, you're probably very the nicest so. person here anyway, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, none <'cause> taken. <laughs> Um, I think she knew Maria. I suppose she yeah. knows Maria, so she knows. Yeah. It's but I mean, but that. But having said that, of course, this is a tiny piece of of a bigger of a yeah. bigger thing, which has got more 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 in it. So we would know those things, you know, if you did the whole piece. I thought it was very. I thought every, every, everybody sounded great. Not just obviously not <laughs> you. It was great. No, you I thought it was very good. Bad. I'd be more than happy with that in my inbox. That's the thing. That's always good. <laughs> that's always good. Uh, it is worthwhile, by the way, remembering that these scripts are real, but we've changed names and some details to avoid copyright issues. So, now, Tanya, you have bought us a lovely script, I understand. It's not a lovely script. I've just read it. It's a <laughs> horrible <laughs> script. <laughs> so, so why did you bring us this script, Tanya? Because I'm horrible and evil. <laughs> Say, just call me Satania. Uh, no. So why did I send you this one? Well, um, I believe when, as a, as a coach, particularly in giving my students the scripts the way I get them as a voice actor. Because if badly you're, written. Badly written, <laughs> yeah. with no punctuation or the yeah. wrong punctuation, because yeah. I teach voice actors to make their own punctuation, and we do that obviously with breathing, mm -hmm. guys, don't we? Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you only get scripts in front of you that have been perfectly written, what are you going to do when you get one? that isn't so this is a section from a very dry long very long uh, mm. e-learning old school um, and <laughs> if you actually look at it it's just words it's just words yes. on a page with yeah. somebody just occasionally just threw a comma at 
Mm. And uh, yeah, that's why I sent it to you, because that's how nice I am. I mean, it's interesting because it it poses a lot of challenges, this script. And I think when we put it in the show notes, when people actually look at it and then go, oh, shall I have a go myself? You really kind of do need to think about where those pauses are before you go for it. So there's, a, there's quite a bit of pre-planning before yep. being in front of the mic with this one. There is, but then how many full-time voice actors actually have the time to do that? Most Absolutely. people just get yeah. that up on the screen, yep. look at it and go, oh, God. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Absolutely. Are you going to go first on this one, Sam? Uh, 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 yeah, I suppose I can. I suppose I can. Absolutely, yes. I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give it a go. In product lifecycle management, engineering qualifies the performance and environmental impact and needs considerable effort. Today, the majority of the engineering activities and important decisions at various stages of the product design process, such as concept generation and evaluation, material selection, manufacturing process selection and performance assessment, are limited by the experience of the product designer and happen in an ad hoc workflow leading to several iterations to meet multiple requirements from mechanical, electrical, thermal and sustainability. Yeah, you see, that's a tough old script. It, it's obvious that you it had is. had a it's... look at that before the show, but but I, that is a difficult one. It is, and it's the whole script's like that. And if I tell you that yeah. the whole script is about seven pages wow. long, oh no. gosh, that's that's that is really tough. Yeah. And as we know, time is money. Yes, mm. <laughs> this is very true. And they don't think about that. Um, is this a client that you could go back to and go, Whoo, who wrote this?" No. Okay. In fact, I learned that. Never do that. Never, ever do that. Mm. I only do that with clients that I know very well. Yeah, and trust. <laughs> that is very true. And trust, absolutely, <laughs> yes. yes. And trust that, that actually you know you can make it better for them. Yes, if yeah. you... Yeah. yeah, it has to be worth your while or, or you're doing it a favour because they're good. But no, um, yeah. I learned the hard way about that many years ago. Well, and also it is what it is, isn't it? You either can tackle this kind of thing mm. or, frankly, you can't. <laughs> yeah. You know totally. what I mean? It's, it's uh, you know, it is written. If, and if it's written, if you've got seven pages written like this, they're not <laughs> going to go and faff around making it nice for you. No. It just doesn't work like that. Shall I have a go? Yeah, go on yes. then. Yeah, yeah, go on. In product lifecycle management, engineering qualifies the performance and environmental impact and needs considerable effort. Today, the majority of the engineering activities and important decisions at the various stages of the production design process, such as concept generation and evaluation, material selection, manufacturing process selection and performance assessment, are limited by the experience of the product designer and happen in an ad hoc workflow, leading to several iterations to meet multiple requirements from mechanical, electrical, thermal and sustainability. Mm. Yeah, you, is, that was a much you you did gave it a much tougher read than me. Yeah, it was an interesting read as well because there's quite a lot of of patterns in that read. Yes, mm. and I had put those patterns in because I cheated <laughs> beforehand and I put the little dots and the dashes in yeah. where I wanted them. Yeah. Ah, okay. You know, I I do worry sometimes that I don't emphasise stuff enough. Um, that I'm too sort of um, you know. So when I listen to that read from you mark mm. um it's th- th- there are there are words that you picked up on that i know i did not yeah um and 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 you you emphasized stuff that i i, I didn't in in that sense and i i wonder if i wonder if i don't do it enough you know i listen to other people's reads and i think oh gosh i didn't i didn't pick up on that bit i think you more have a you have to have a softer approach though sam generally Right. Okay. I think that's probably what it what it is, and and it's nothing to do with with gender either. I just think Mark was a bit more like, right, this is what we're going to do. This is engineering, and it's going to be like that. <laughs> kind of. Kind, yeah. I kind of. I mean, you kind of read my mind. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Cool. Well, I would love to hear how you did it. Oh no, Tanya. What, me. Yeah, yeah, you have to do I it now. Only yeah. you had to do it. No, no. I'm sorry. You have to do it as well. Oh god. <laughs> All right. Mm-mm. Okay. Mm-mm. In product lifecycle management. Engineering qualifies the performance and environmental impact and needs considerable effort. Today, the majority of the engineering activities and important decisions at various stages of the product design process, such as concept generation and evaluation, material selection, manufacturing process selection and performance assessment, are limited by the experience of the product designer and happen in an ad hoc workflow, leading to several iterations to meet multiple requirements from mechanical, electrical, thermal and sustainability. 
Lovely, because that had that had oomph and welly in it, which mine didn't. I don't think <laughs> it was it, quite it, hard. Yes, it went in quite hard as as well. And I and I appreciate what you, what you were saying before that that, that Sam's was a, a softer read. It felt like it hit a specific tone right at the beginning, and then kept that tone entirely throughout. Yeah, because of the fa- the sector that it's in, and because it's yeah. for engineers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So nothing was more important than anything else. Um, so and, that was very deliberate then. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And also because obviously I don't know how much breathing you actually heard through that. Um, but of course, there was very few places to breathe. And so I was constantly breathing to keep it that flow going, but also to make it land. This is what we're doing, guys. This is why it's happening. And that's what you're going to do. How do you say that? that? Brings us on to now. Normally, this would bring us on to the wild card bit of the um, of the podcast. But today, we're going to do something a bit interesting or a little bit different, anyway. Because Tanya uh, also had another script, which uh, was it's well, another yeah. evil script. It has to be. Said. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So I have a client. This is a, 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 a French client, a lovely person. Uh, sends me beautiful scripts that are literally translated by robots. I think. You're right. Okay. And, another AI. Um, Issue. Another AI. Yeah. Um, and they're not translated into English very well, although sometimes you know exactly what they mean to say, and I will change some things. Some things I do leave as wooden as they are written. <laughs> Why? Well, because, lovely client or not, that they don't pay the best rate, and I yeah. am not being paid as a translator. I could rewrite this script for them, but that would take up my time. And as I said earlier, time is money. Um, Mm. So basically, I do the best I can with it. And how I actually make it work is by humanizing the rubbish. (laughs) Uh so if they (laughs) so as long as i basically have an idea what they're talking about i can make it work by the way i deliver the script you've got scripts with lines and this is and i've sent it to you the way it came to me so you've got one line where there is absolutely all the words have joined up together yes with no no (laughs) gaps in them at all no um and of course there is a bit of acting in there too yeah. Uh, and there's and there's three people in it. There's well, three there are people three people in it, but I feel a bit like a soap actor who's having to flick <laughs> to the very final page of the script to actually see if I'm in that episode because I'm only in at the end. Well, you could be Justin unless you're the one that's giving birth. Let me just think. I could be Pierre instead of instead of Sophie, if you like. Yeah, do it. I think you sh- definitely should. And then <laughs> right. I, I don't even need. To, well, I can cam- I can become Philippe at and the end. And you cameo at like. the end. Yeah. <laughs> cool. But, uh, yeah. Good luck, studio. Oh, hello. How can I help you? Hello. I come to buy products for my baby. I have chosen this one for normal skin. Is that good? I see here for atopic-prone skin. What exactly is atopic-prone skin? Ah, uh, an atopic-prone skin is a more and more common skin type these days. The skin is very dry with occasional eczema patches that appear and can make the skin itch. That reminds me of something. <laughs> that reminds me something. That's so funny. I'm sorry. What does it remind you <laughs> of? Putting the off in made sorry. me laugh. And that's why she uses Vagisil. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so funny. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Mm. That reminds me something. And how does that happen? Oh, the hereditary factor is very important for this skin type. Uh, do you know if you had eczema as a baby or allergies or, or the baby's father? My husband did. He had eczema when he was a baby. My mother-in-law told me. Don't be worried. Eczema flare-ups decrease with age. And what do you suggest I use then? Has 50%? I recommend Voliar. It's a range specially designed for atopic babies. And what do they have that these products have more than the others? Uh, They are high security products that can be used from the first days of life. And of course, without fragrance. Thanks for your advice. I give you a Bart oil sample. It's tr- <laughs> that's just a spelling. I'll do that properly. I, I give you a bath oil sample. It strengthens the other products and effect. And since the water's hard in our region, it's better to put it in the bath water. We hope to see you soon. You will come and introduce your baby to us when he will be born, won't you? Yes, I give birth in two months. Well done, Pierre. You were perceptive. Sorry, yes, I had to change the, change the gender of change the person. Change the gender. Well done, Pierre. You were perceptive. You asked the good question and you were convincing and reassuring. You used simple words to talk about atopic-prone skin, the customer left reassured, and with the appropriate products. 
Yeah, that was horribly translated. You're absolutely right, Tanya. <laughs> that was so my, funny. My question as I was doing it, though, was should I have been correcting on the fly as I went along or do they want it as read? No, I think if it's if it's something obvious that you think, oh, come on, this is a bit, you know, like yeah. bath oil, bath oil. Sometimes, but rather than I, I give yeah. you a bath oil sample, would you yeah. say, I, I, I'll give you a bath oil sample? Yeah, I, yeah, I okay. would do that. But yeah. if the whole sentence needed record it, re- rewording, then no. Stuff right, it. okay. Um, yeah. And uh, and also, uh, yeah, I thought you did very well. Um, one of the things I thought was interesting with you, Mark, is you warmed into it more. You you really got into Sophie. I mean, yeah. sorry, into Pierre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse the expression. Yes, um, quite and, absolute uh, poor Sophie. Yeah, at, at first, you were quite uh, you were quite corporate with it, and then you kind of relaxed a bit. I thought and kind yeah, of enjoyed I agree. it. So so I, I just think, yeah, at first it was not conversational. Uh, and I thought, Sam, you, you were very well cast as uh, Justine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I did. I did one. I was really aware that I did, as I said it, I did one um, sentence totally wrong. Yes, you did. Because <laughs> you did, Dora don't be worried, flare-ups decrease with age. And I should have said, and what do you suggest I use then? Yes. Not, and what do you suggest I use then? <laughs> How ridiculous. <laughs> I think I actually probably relaxed more after the sentence with no gaps in it, which says, skin is very dry yes. with occasional eczema patches that appear and can make the skin itch. And it's like, I think my brain went, thank God I got through that, I can now relax into it a bit more. Did you yeah. know that that was the original kind of strap line that Coca-Cola were going to use, I think, the way that was. <laughs> Skin's very dry. Can you imagine the millions of sales they would have had <laughs> oh if they had gone with that? Only they had had the foresight. <laughs> what I love about it is because it appears in a certain way on the on the page, it looks like it's and can maketh the skin itch. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the French for you. It was quite biblical, that, wasn't it, after a while? <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> and that, that has 50% random line. Um, I'm sure that was meant to be with another yes. thing, with another line. No it idea, be. really. Because there was yeah. a gap saying yes. uh, th- th- where, where there was a number missing completely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which it must have been <laughs> from. <laughs> I mean, I think it still made sense though the way we did it, even even though it, it, was, it did. even though it was badly translated. <laughs> yeah, I honestly I thought you did a great job. So as you know, I'm sure you'd get even better. Very I mean, funny. I'm sure we'd be much more dramatic even the better. more we did it. <laughs> even better than that was. How do you say that? So remember that the scripts that we read, we'll put those in the show notes, and we'd be really interested. If you want to have a try at any one of them, <laughs> of course you're going to go for Philippe. Obviously, Absolutely, you yes. Have it, and send it in on uh, MP3 to podcast at britishvoiceover.co.uk. That would be amazing. And we can pick <laughs> one or two. I think we'll be lucky if we get one or two. Absolutely. <laughs> Honestly, we can pick one or two to play in an upcoming episode. Well, we have had a lovely email this week from Magdal van der Gaag about one of our earlier episodes uh, where we talked about audiobooks. Now, Magdal is um, a trilingual voiceover artist. Yes, uh, it's amazing. Sam, you've, you've got uh, what she said in the email there, haven't you? Yes, yes. She said... I actually wanted to add audiobooks to my set of skills because it's such a different skill set from what I use on a daily basis for my commercial and corporate work. And I've learned to love recording audiobooks. If you remember, we had a big discussion about the fact that we didn't <laughs> With Claire Reeves, I Claire Reeves and myself, not really <laughs> into audiobooks. Yeah. <laughs> and she goes on to say, the energy and voice I use for audiobooks are completely different. In fact, recording audiobooks feels like yoga for my voice. Wow. And from listening to audiobooks, I've learnt so much. And then I've tried to apply those learnings to the books I get. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, I that thought that is, was really interesting. Yeah, that's fascinating. Tanya, do you read audiobooks? <laughs> I don't have the time. <laughs> um, I, I know that sounds very a kind of, you know, thing to say, but um, I the I remember doing one many, many years ago and realising, oh my goodness, if I do an audiobook, I won't have time to do all, any other work at all or have mm. a life. But to do a long haul, you know, anybody that thinks doing audiobooks is easy only has mm, to listen to some people that don't know what they're doing reading them and True. they'll know that they're not True. there are some amazing audiobook narrators out there yes, and absolutely. you know doing I mean doing characters if you if, you know if I get a book to read and I've got 20 male characters I mean I'm good but I'm not that good how am I going to make yeah. them all yeah. sound different exactly. 
Yeah. And it's the same or 15 teenage kids. It's a difficult thing. And so mm-hmm. sometimes you have to put your bits of belief on one side. It's a, it's a real skill. Some people love it. And that is how they work. That's their voice mm-hmm. work. Whereas for mm-hmm. me, I'm, I just I would get bored too easily. <laughs> Sam was a bit disappointed with me, Tanya, because I said I don't do audio books because the uh, finished <laughs> amount of money per hour was well, not good enough. Well, that's also another consideration. To be, unless you're Stephen <laughs> Fry, obviously. That, or yeah. or uh, <laughs> Sir Patrick Stewart. Perhaps. Correct. <laughs> yep. No, you're okay. right. It, it isn't good. And often, I'll tell you something very quickly. As a coach, I get some lovely students and, the, and they've graduated and then they get, they get a job and they say they'll do it because they haven't worked out that oh. what they're getting paid for one minute of finished audio yeah. and then they're like on the phone to me in tears saying, oh my God, I've committed to this. What am I going to do? You do the job and you learn from that lesson. Yes, that's you, what you do. do. And yeah, you do absolutely. the job. Yeah. You absolutely do the job. Well, that's what's fascinating actually about audiobooks is people often see it as one of the, well, they don't, as one of the entry level, one of the first things. <laughs> Things well, they quiet. think about doing as a voice over. Really? It's, it's a really tough gig. It's difficult. Uh, really, really tough. Yeah. But I do think that um, she had a point in that I think that there's a lot of things we can learn from doing audiobooks. True. Even True. if you don't want to do them yes. for a, a you know for a living necessarily, there's a lot of things, techniques you can learn from them that you can bring to your other um, work. So I do think Absolutely. they're a, you know really kind of really valid. Mattel also sent us in a recording of one of the scripts from that week yes. and did it as a character, it's brilliant. which I thought was great. <laughs> oh, um, fun. And uh, she did, uh, it was one of the commercial scripts and she did it as a little old lady. Yeah, let's, let's have a listen to it. Remember when live music just got put on pause and then in 2022, it came back in style. You swapped movie nights for mosh pits, cancelled plans for wristbands, live streams for main stage screams. In the Netherlands, Hungary, Brazil, UK, Sweden and beyond, you made a lot of swaps. All nine million of you. Amazing. Remember, you can send us your takes on this week's scripts too if you want to try Tanya's scripts, <laughs> if you really want to. <laughs> and if you've got any voiceover questions you'd like answers to, and it could be anything about the job, the marketing or the read or the audition process, anything really, whatever's bothering you, then send your questions for future episodes to podcast at britishvoiceover.co.uk. We do read them all, even if even if we don't um, refer to them, we do read them all, I promise. And you, you, you'll you get somebody, um, you know, somebody like Tanya, to be able to actually put yeah. her spin on it. Because, you know, something like this, our question this week is, should you specialise in just a few key voiceover genres or widen your um, scope? So should you be a jack of all trades or a, or a specialist? Yeah. Well, I think if you're capable, if you're capable of being a genuinely good jack of all trades, then yes, absolutely, why not? But if you are not, you know, a versatile voice is not um, different words with the same voice. It actually True. is different voices. Therefore, if you can't do it, but you can do one or two things extremely well, then there is nothing wrong with absolutely concentrating on those, making reels that can sound as varied in, at least in tone. And it's a tonal mm. quality that often people get wrong. They don't understand. It's not just about the accent. It's if, you know, yep. you can do 10 accents, but if you've got the same tone, I know it's you. OK. Mm, um, and mm. so uh, therefore, then there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but, yeah, you know, if you're really only, you know, often I get people I want to do commercials and they have to learn. It's like learning to ride a bike with stabilizers. Let's go on to corporates and explainers first. And then once you've got the hang of it a bit more, then we can take the stabilizers off and try you on a very overwritten commercial. You know what yeah. I mean? So I think that depends. So for me, I am a jack of all trades, mm. even audiobooks if I had to. Um, mm, but um, <laughs> uh, and, and that's because I, that's the way I, I've always worked. But no, some people, they, that, you know, they're brilliant at one or two genres. If that's what you're doing, that's your vibe. Do it and do it as best you can. I guess yeah. I'm a bit of a jack of all trades as well, but I but I have areas that I push myself more towards because I know that I can pick up the work there. Yes. Yeah. What? Where would you say? What would you say is your? If you know, what could you give an example? I mean, the me? two areas that I that I pick up most is probably corporate, including e-learning mm. and um, IVR. The, right. the old bread and butter IVR. Oh, I love IVR. I, you know, I, I was do. the first female voiceover to do IVR in this in this country. Were you? I Were was. You? Yes. Fascinating. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just telling you. It's <laughs> amazing. Who was it's, it for? Uh, I couldn't possibly. I know the company. I couldn't tell you the, the client. <laughs> oh no no no! I meant the company. <laughs> oh, uh, a company that's still going today, actually. Fab. 
Yeah. Wow. So, uh, yeah, they were the first one in the UK. Gosh. And I was their first female voice, and I still work for them today. But back in 1967, that was quite... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <good one. laughs> ah, well, I'm was kidding, spiked, I'm wasn't kidding. It? <laughs> wasn't it just, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, 90, I think it was about 1996, 97. In fact, it was 96 because I, the last I was, uh, I, I was insisting on my daughter being born on the day she was due because I had work booked. And so I was uh, being induced and I had to go up, walk up a very steep flight of steps, nine months pregnant, did a voice session and then went straight to the hospital to be induced. God. Oh, that's wow. dedication, Tanya. I'm hard, Come on. You see. I'm hard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I've got many stories like that. Operations, the works. Sadly, our podcast is not, it can't oh, be that long. Mind. I'm terribly no, sorry. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Tanya. Thank you so much. And, and everybody um, who's listening, just to remind you that all of Tanya's details, if you want to get in touch with her for anything, voiceover work, or, of course, wonderful coaching, um, they can be found in the show notes. Yes. We'll also be putting today's scripts in in the show notes so that you can have a read yourself uh, if you really want to. Uh, please have a go. Send it to podcast at britishvoiceover.co.uk. We would love to hear what you do with them. Yes, and it's obviously it's the same uh, email address for any voiceover questions that you have. Absolutely. Please like and subscribe the podcast. Tell your voiceover mates, reshare our Facebook posts, all of that kind of stuff, if you would. Yes, yes, please do. And thank you, honestly, Tanya. It was such a pleasure <laughs> it's been to a have blast. you on. It was... Thank you. I've loved it every second. Can you tell? <laughs> thank you. No, I mean it. And, and, and what a brilliant idea this podcast is. Aww. And I'm sure it's going to be very successful. I will share the hell out of it for oh, you. Bless, and yeah. um, anything I can do to help, apart from the iron in love, you know where I am. <laughs> Don't move a muscle, though, Tanya. There's one. One more job we need you to do. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Do the do the choral out bit. So bit. here is the chorus bit. Now this Tanya's very used to doing choral bits. So <laughs> wait for it. So Mark, both you and Tanya can join in on the title. So okay. we will be back next week with more scripts and another voiceover guest when we will be asking. How, how do you say? Do you say, say that? that? How do you say that? that?